Pierre Savergnan de Brazza. Pietro Paolo Savergnan de Brazza, then known as Pierre Paul Francois Camille Savergnan de Brazza, French pronunciation, January 26, 1852, September 14, 1905, was an Italian born French explorer. With the backing of the Societe de Geographie de Paris, he opened up for France entry along the right bank of the Congo that eventually led to French colonies in Central Africa. His easy manner and great physical charm as well as his Pacific approach among Africans were his trademarks. Under French colonial rule, the capital of the Republic of the Congo was named Brazzaville after him and the name was retained by the post-colonial rulers. Early Years Born in Castel Gandolfo in the Papal States, near Rome, Pietro Savergnan de Brazza was the seventh son of Count Oscanio Savergnan de Brazza, a nobleman of Udine with many French connections, and his wife Giacinta Simonetti. Pietro was interested in exploration from an early age and won entry to the French naval school at Brest. He graduated as an ensign and sailed on the French ship Jean d'Arc to Algeria, where he took part in the crushing of the Makrani revolt. Exploration in Africa Brazza first encountered Africa in 1872, while sailing on an anti-slavery mission near Gabon. His next ship was the Venus, which stopped at Gabon regularly. In 1874 Brazza made two trips into the interior, up the Gabon and Ogoway rivers. He then proposed to the government that he explore the Ogoway to its source. With the help of friends in high places, including Jules Ferry and Leon Gambetta, he secured partial funding, the rest coming from his own pocket. He was granted French citizenship in 1874, and adopted the French spelling of his name. His efforts to gain citizenship had been aided by Louis Raymond de Montaignac de Chauvins, who acted as de Brez's patron in the early years of his career. In this expedition, which lasted from 1875 to 1878, armed only with cotton textiles and tools to use for barter, and accompanied by Noah Bale, a doctor, naturalist Alfred Marche, a sailor, 13 Senegalese lapdots and four local interpreters, Brazza charmed and talked his way deep inland. Dot upon his return to Paris he was fated as a celebrity in the French press and was courted by the French political elite as the man to advance their imperialist ambitions in Africa. The French authorized a second mission, which was carried out 1879-1882. The French had adjudged his first mission a success and felt that a mission to the Congo Basin was needed to prevent Belgium from occupying the entire area. By following the Oga River upstream and proceeding overland to the Lefany River and then downstream, de Brezza succeeded in reaching the Congo River in 1880 without encroaching on Portuguese claims. De Brezza then proposed to King Ilor Makoko of the Bates that he place his kingdom under the protection of the French flag. Makoko, interested in trade possibilities and in gaining an edge over his rivals, signed the treaty. Makoko also arranged for the establishment of a French settlement at Moa on the Congo's Maleba Pool, a place later known as Brazzaville. After de Brazza's departure, the outpost was manned by two lapdots under the command of Senegalese Sergeant Malamine Kamara, whose resourcefulness had impressed de Brazza during their several months together trekking inland from the coast. During this trip he encountered Stanley near Vivi. Brazza did not tell Stanley that he had just signed a treaty with Makoko. It took Stanley some months to realize that he had been beaten in the race set by his sponsor, King Leopold. Brazza was again celebrated in France for his efforts. The press dubbed him Le Conqueron Pacifique, the peaceful conqueror, for his success in ensuring French imperial expansion without waging war. In 1883, de Brazza was named Governor General of the French Congo in 1886. He was dismissed in 1897 due to poor revenue from the colony and journalist reports of conditions for the natives that some said were too good. For his part Brazza had become somewhat disillusioned with the exploitative and repressive practices of the concessionary companies, which he had witnessed firsthand. De Brazza became a Freemason in 1888. Initiated at the Alsace-Lorraine Lodge in Paris, on June 26, 1888. By 1905, stories had reached Paris of injustice, forced labor and brutality under the laissez-faire approach of the Congo's new governor, Emile Gentil, to the new concession companies set up by the French colonial office and condoned by Prosper Philippe Paguar, Catholic Bishop of the Congo. Brazza was sent to investigate these stories and the resulting report was revealing and damning, in spite of many obstructions placed in his path. When his deputy Felicien Chalet put the embarrassing report before the National Assembly, the report was suppressed. The oppressive conditions in the French Congo continued for decades. Personal life Brazza married Therese de Chambrun. As a result, Pierre de Chambrun and Charles de Chambrun were his brothers-in-law. Meanwhile, René de Chambrun, the son-in-law of Vichy France Prime Minister Pierre Laval, was his nephew. Death and Memorials 
The last tour of the Congo took a hard physical toll of Brazza, and on his return journey to Dakar he died of dysentery and fever, amid rumors that he had been poisoned. His body was repatriated to France and he was given a state funeral at saint Clotilde, Paris, prior to interment at the cemetery of Père Lachaise. His widow, Therese, dissatisfied with the politician's subsequent behavior, had his body exhumed and reinterred in Algiers, capital of present-day Algeria. The epitaph for his burial site in Algiers reads, Un memoir pur de sang humain, a memory untainted by human blood. Brazzaville Mausoleum in February 2005 Presidents Ngeso of Congo, Andimba of Gabon and Chirac of France gathered at a ceremony to lay the foundation stone for a memorial to Pierre de Brazza, a mausoleum of Italian marble. On September 30, 2006, de Brazza's remains were exhumed from Algiers along with those of his wife and four children. They were reinterred in Brazzaville on 3 October in the new marble mausoleum which had been prepared for them and had cost some $10 million. The ceremony was attended by three African presidents and a French foreign minister, who paid tribute to de Braz's humanitarian work against slavery and the abuse of African workers. Mausoleum Controversy The decision to honor Pierre de Braz as a founding father of the Republic of the Congo has elicited protests among many Congolese. Mwinda Press, the journal of the Association of Congolese Democrats in France wrote articles quoting Teofilo Benga who depicted Pierre de Braz as a colonizer and not a humanist declaring him to have raped a Congolese woman, a princess in the equivalent of a Vestal Virgin, and to have pillaged villages, raising highly charged questions as to why the colonizer should be revered as a national hero instead of the Congolese who fought against colonization. Notes The Congolese who fought against colonization